Welcome to Aging in Style with me, Lori Williams. I'm an optimist by nature, and I believe you can follow your dreams at any age. My grandmother's journey with dementia ignited a passion in me to work with seniors. I've spent the past 13 years learning about seniors and aging. In my mid-50s, I followed my own dream and founded my company, where I use my expertise to help seniors locate housing and resources. On this podcast, we cover all aspects of aging. Join us each week to meet senior living experts and inspirational seniors who are following their dreams. The fact is, we're all aging, so why not do it in style? Hey guys, welcome to the show. Today we are talking about fall prevention because a fall is a game changer in the senior world. And we talk about that all the time that you can be going along just fine. Um, if you have a fall, it could land you in the hospital with a broken hip. It could lead to all kinds of other things. So we want to prevent falls. So that's what we're talking about today. We are going to talk about what causes seniors to fall, how we can prevent falls, how we can look around the house and make sure that we are safe. And so to do that, we are talking today with Jackie Archer, who is an expert. <laughs> she is. She's looking at me funny, but she is an expert. Um, she is 30 years in the medical field and has spent the past 11 years as a patient navigator with Advanced Rehab Trust Home Health. She is very active in our senior living communities. She helps families with all different types of challenges that arise with their senior parents and she teaches better balance classes um, all kinds of exercise classes in different independent living communities um, as well as brain health and she is part of the senior standing tall coalition we kind of run in the same circles we do a lot of volunteer work a lot with veterans event that we do every year and, and many other things so welcome jackie well thank you Lori, and congratulations to you guys on your uh, great october that you Guys had. Oh, thank you. Thank you. It's been a great month and happy that we've been able to help so many seniors. Um, I always like to ask this question because it's always interesting to me how people kind of got into this whole senior living world. So what drew you into senior living? Uh, I think really what drew me into the senior living is when my grandpa passed away, mm -hmm. my grandma was home alone. Uh, my cousin and I decided to take turns staying with her. So all throughout high school, I basically lived at my grandma's house. So she would have someone else there with her. So uh, my mom and my aunts and everybody weren't uh, worried about her being there alone. And then from there, I went to a nursing home and I worked in nursing home through uh, high school also. And I just fell in love with the, the senior community. Mm -hmm. I love that. And it's so interesting to me that it is our grandparents. For most people, I ask that question. It's a grandma, a grandpa. So um, I think that's really interesting. I like that. Um, so what causes seniors to fall? There's many different things that can cause a senior to fall. Um, it could be medication. It can be uh, they need to have their vision checked. Uh, it could be a rug in the house. Uh, there's just so many different things that, that can cause a senior to fall. And we're going to go over some of the different uh, things a little bit later in the podcast too, um, and how we can prevent those things mm -hmm. from happening to them. Um, a lot of times people will get on a medication that they don't understand the side effects. Mm -hmm. And sometimes that side effect could be, it could lower that blood pressure. They go to stand up. Uh, they're a little bit dizzy. Uh, they go to take a step. And then next thing mm -hmm. they know, they're on the ground. Um, other things um, that can cause a fall is you're in the bathroom and it's slick in there. You know, you've got some water coming out of the shower. Or, uh, you're trying to dry off. A lot of the falls will happen in the bathroom. Mm -hmm. I would say probably 75% of the falls that I go and assist with are in the bathroom. Really? Yeah. Well, and I always hear also is that people get up in the night to go to the bathroom, again, the bathroom. Yes. <laughs> and so between going from their bedroom to the bathroom, they fall. Maybe it's dark or maybe they kind of a little woozy, not completely awake. Could you find that as the case too? Yes, that happens a lot. Uh, easy things that can help to prevent that are put a nightlight in. Mm -hmm. um, a lot of times they'll trip and fall over a, a little rug they have there. Mm -hmm. uh, that That is one thing that as soon as I walk into to someone's house or apartment and I see all these throw rugs everywhere, <laughs> which used to be the big thing yeah. way back then, um, that you see all these little, cute little rugs, which are great, but they're not great for our seniors when mm -hmm. they're trying to uh, do the 100-yard dash from their bed to the bathroom. Exactly. Well, and the other thing I noticed when I was visiting my mom uh, last year, she has a lot of the throw rugs, too. And her husband, he shuffles his feet. And all I kept thinking was, oh, oh this is not good. No, <laughs> so, that is not good. And a lot of seniors do 
it, what causes that? I mean, I guess it could be some illnesses or, um, you know, just different things. But I notice a lot of seniors, as they get older, they do shuffle their feet. You see a lot of them shuffle because you're right, because of different diseases or things that they may have. Also, you'll see them shuffling their feet when uh, they've had a fall already. Oh, so they're scared. They're yes, being they're careful. Mm-hmm. Yeah. And now they're starting to do those little baby shuffle steps, mm-hmm. which really throws the gait or the, the way that you walk off even more. Oh, uh, so uh-huh. that, that is not a, a great thing either. If you see them shuffling, they really need to. I, I have a gentleman in one of the communities that every time I see him, he'll say, glide, glide, because I tell him, glide, <laughs> you're supposed to glide. You're not supposed to shuffle. It's glide. Oh, that's good to know. So, I mean, really the things to look for, like you said, uh, medication that they're taking, or maybe like medication interactions too, could yes. probably cause dizziness and things, um, and keeping the house safe. So Let's get into more like prevention. So if you, when you go to someone's house or apartment and you look around, what are the things that you're looking for to kind of, you know, prevent them from falling? Well, we do have a fall uh, prevention safety checklist. And I'd like to read a couple of those off. Those are, these are great things to have. Okay. Um, for one, clear your, your walk path. Make sure that your, your paths are all clear. I had a lady one day who I was sitting there talking to, and she went to stand up, and right next to her chair, she had a, some newspapers and a couple magazines. She went to stand up and take a step. She stepped right on that magazine, and that magazine is almost like stepping on ice. Yeah. And she about did the splits in front of me. Um, I was happy that I was there, yeah. but I also explain to her that you know putting these things Mm -hmm. here next to the chair are not a good idea these are the kind of things that you know she might have uh, dozed off go to Mm -hmm. stand up and walk away from you know get up off her chair and walk away she's going to have that fall again yeah so we had that conversation next time i went and visited her there was nothing next to her chair (laughs) see and you saw how quick it happens how easy it is you know you're fine one minute and then the next you're on the floor and maybe you have a broken hip yes so, yes, okay. and, and that happens more than than what we would ever know. So clear your walkways. Yes, clear those walkways. <laughs> Install rails or grab bars if needed in the bathroom. A lot of people don't want to put things in the bathroom because they think it makes the bathroom not look right or it looks like a handicapped bathroom, mm-hmm. and people get offended sometimes by that. These things are, are there to make you can continue to be independent exactly um so put those rails in there there's nothing wrong with having a Mm -hmm. a grab rail in there especially i would think if you still have a bathtub in your house um i mean that's just a fall risk right there oh yeah you're trying to step step up over over. yes absolutely it is Mm -hmm. much easier if you just had a walk-in shower yeah i kind of like it actually when i go to a hotel and they have the bars in the shower i mean (laughs) yes i think it's nice (laughs) I see nothing wrong with it. It's good for all of us. (laughs) That's right. (laughs) Um, To maintain or improve your vision, routine eye exams. Mm -hmm. You know, people don't really think about, you know, maybe I need to get out and get my eyes checked. But if you're having vision problems, you're definitely going to have some Mm -hmm. problems with your, um, the way you walk. Because you're going to try to be more careful about the way that you walk because of your vision. So... Go get your vision checked. And that's an mm-hmm. easy thing to, to check off that list. Yeah. Um, watch out for the rugs. You're mm-hmm. back to the rugs again. Remove all those throw rugs. Follow the four R's. Reorganize, remodel, rearrange, remove. Definitely uh, yeah. prevention. And I think that's important because a lot of people, you know, a lot of the baby boomers especially, they want to stay in their homes, which, you know, that's fine. You need to do what's right for you. But you need to make the house safe. Right. And those are all good things. The reorganize, the, you know, remodel, do whatever, put in, you know, some safety bars, grab bars and stuff in the bathroom to prevent a fall. And then also when you move into a senior community, you still need to follow all those same rules. You know, you don't want clutter and and things that you could fall on. Right. Right. The less is better. Exactly. And and back way back when everybody used to have all these collectibles, Mm -hmm. all these little knickknacks, all these uh, pieces of furniture, (laughs) doilies, everything all over the place. But really less is better. The less that you have to do to maintain those things, Mm -hmm. uh, the less things you have to go around. It's just much easier for a senior to Mm -hmm. have less in their apartments or homes to have to deal with. Mm -hmm. Use adaptive equipment like uh, reachers or a shoehorn. Those reachers are excellent, and they are very inexpensive. Yes. So let's talk a little bit about some of this, these things, because there's some really cool things out there. So There are. With the reacher, I actually have one of these, and I use it for many things. 
not just because we're short. <laughs> not just because we're short, but it is it, it comes in very handy. But I think everyone should have one of those because, you know, Maybe, you know, if you're a senior, especially sometimes it may be harder if you drop something on the floor to lean down and get it. You could just use the reacher to pick it up. Yes, they tend yeah. to bend over mm -hmm. and try to pick something up instead of bend at the knees to pick them up. Yep. Um, when they bend over, then mm -hmm. it seems like it's, it's almost like they're doing a somersault. Exactly. I, I have Throws more them people off. fall. Yes. Yeah, that head weighs about eight pounds. Yeah. Most, most heads weigh about eight, eight pounds. If you figure you got a bowling ball on your head and you're bending over forward, what's going to happen? It's going to keep bringing you forward. Gravity. <laughs> yes, yes, exactly. <laughs> so, yeah, that's a good point. So you do see people falling just because they were leaning over to get something. Yes. Okay, so mm -hmm. get a grabber for sure. Um, and they will come in handy for many things. Like if you're, you know, trying to get something out of your washing machine and you may not be real tall, <laughs> you can get stuff out with that. Some other things you said, the sh like a shoehorn, is that what you said? So to yeah. help them when they're putting... Their shoes right. on? Or? Yeah, it, it seems mm -hmm. to be a little harder for us seniors to try to pick that leg up and put that, that uh, shoe on there. Mm -hmm. Get a shoehorn so you're not struggling to do that. Because yeah. what happens, you're trying to bend forward to get that shoe on. Uh -huh. If you have that shoehorn, it makes it life a little easier to yeah. uh, get that on. They also have devices for like your socks. Mm -hmm. I've seen that. Yeah, that yeah. help you to get your socks on. Uh, these are all things that will help you to stay independent. Mm -hmm. I don't think they're... There's a lot of people out there that want to take your independence away. They want no. to give you that independence and you keep that independence yeah. as long as possible. But these are ways to make you. Mm -hmm. And there are some cool things. My mom has arthritis and she was telling me about one of the coolest things she has is she likes to put her necklace on still. Well, it's very hard to do the clasp when you have arthritis. So she found some kind of little device that you use it. And it helps you to put the necklace on. There's one for her bracelets, too. She can put those on. Um, so there's all kinds of things out there to keep you independent. Oh, absolutely. I have quite a few people who have gone to the magnets. Oh, They uh, okay. have magnets. When and that's what keeps their necklaces closed or bracelets closed, things like that. Yes. Oh, that's cool. Yeah, yeah there's all kinds of things out there. It's it's great. Yes, it's great. There's great devices out there. Um, use walking aids, such as a cane, a walker, wheelchair, uh, those all help to improve balance. Mm -hmm. I've I've had countless people tell me, oh, no, that's for older people. Yeah. I don't want a cane. That's for older people. Or I don't want to use that walker. People will see me use that walker. Well, I have people now that have that walker, and that walker has everything but the kitchen sink in yeah. it. <laughs> and it's so much easier for them to use that walker. Mm -hmm. It helps them to stand up straighter. Uh, it helps with the balance. You don't see them having as many falls. Mm -hmm. And they keep everything inside the walker. So they're not having to fumble around with it. Yeah. So Well, and then if you have to carry something, especially like if you're in a retirement community and you go down and there's, you know, there's shopping or something, you know, something yes. you want to buy and then you just put it in your little basket <laughs> or on your walker. And, you know, it is funny. So many seniors do say that. Well, I, you know, I don't want to look old. I don't want to have a walker. But I mean, it's do you want to fall and break your hip? I mean, yes. <laughs> I mean, I just I see nothing wrong with it, you know, and I, you know. I don't want to say I look forward to the day I have a walker, but, you know, when I need one, I will proudly have my walker and decorate my basket. And now they come in all kinds of different colors. So. Right? Oh, I could get a purple one. <laughs> yes. <laughs> um, and if you are having some problems uh, with, with walking or transferring or mm -hmm. getting up out of the chair, those are all kind of things. Maybe go to the doctors. Talk to your doctor about getting yeah. some physical therapy. If you're homebound, you're at home. Home mm -hmm. health care can come into your home and do physical therapy. If you're able to get out and about, they do have uh, several different physical therapy locations around that you can go to. But it, it's a great way to stay strong and stay independent. Mm -hmm. And with the physical therapy, they work to kind of build your core. Is that what they do to help you with yes. your balance? Yes, they're going to uh, help to build that core. But they are also going to do a lot of balance training mm -hmm. with you mm -hmm. um, and also to help the muscles to stay a little bit, to stay stronger. Okay, so help build strength up. They help with flexibility as well, kind of work on that. Yes, yes. And I teach several uh, exercise classes, and that's one thing that we do a lot of is the stretching because once they are not as limber as what they used to be, mm -hmm. then your gait changes, the way you walk changes. Oh. So you're you're not striding anymore. You're taking those short, choppy steps. Mm -hmm. um, I have a lot of people who even... When we sit and, and do our seated exercises, just trying to turn their head from one side to the other. 
you're not having to do all those things that you used to do when you were younger. So their mobility and just turning their head from side to side is very limited. So can you imagine if you're walking and somebody's coming up from behind and you're trying to turn to see them, mm-hmm. now now you're setting yourself up for a fall because you're try- now you're having to turn your whole body around. Oh, yeah, because you can't turn just your head. Right. Yeah. Right. So wow. there's a lot of different aspects mm-hmm. of of uh, uh, what can happen, what can make you have a fall. Yeah. You don't even think about that, about mm-hmm. turning. But so so if you are starting to have falls or, or have had a fall, really try and get some home health, physical therapy in, which your Medicare will cover. We've talked about that yes. on other shows. But typically, how many visits would they provide in your home? You know, it, it really does depend. Medicare has changed uh, a lot of the rules and the ways that they used to do things, used to get all kinds of visits, and now they do, don't do that anymore. They're putting a lot more back on the individual. Mm-hmm. Um, and really, it is about us taking care of ourselves. Mm-hmm. Home health comes in there. The physical therapist will come in there and evaluate you. And then they have to follow the guidelines of Medicare mm-hmm. uh, so that you may get a few visits. You may get, you know, six, eight, you may get 10, 12. It just mm-hmm. depends on what really is going on at the time. And mm-hmm. if you are making making your goals and if you can improve, yeah. but they're going to do whatever they can to, to keep you as independent mm-hmm. as possible. But they teach you these things. And Mm -hmm. then the key is you need to continue doing these exercises on your own. And I think that's where a lot of us stop. Yes. (laughs) It's easier to have someone there, you know, reminding us and this is how we do it and, you know, kind of working us out. But I mean, I think if we just, we keep that in mind, we don't want to fall. So I think that's a good incentive to do those exercises. Right. Yes. And, and uh, I will tell you, I go over and over and try to empower the seniors that that I work with every day in the different choices and things that they have out there. For some reason, they think that a pill or somebody else should come in and and make them do these things. Mm -hmm. And that way they will continue to do their exercises or take their medication or whatever. Yes. But they feel like it's somebody else's responsibility. It's not. It's our own responsibility to do these things. We have to decide, Mm -hmm. I want to get up and I want to stay mobile. I want to be able to go to my granddaughter's dance recital. I want to be able to go to the next Christmas party at the the family's house. Mm -hmm. If we don't, we deteriorate. Yeah. You know, it's just what happens to us. Mm -hmm. So, yeah, staying active is is really a key uh, to preventing those falls. Mm -hmm. There are a couple other like fall facts that I would like to bring up. Oh, yeah, too, Lori. sure. Uh, one out of every three adults age 65 or older fall each year. Less than half talk to their doctor or family about it. Why is that? Because they're afraid that if they have a fall, their mm-hmm. family's automatically going to say, you can't stay home by yourself anymore mm-hmm. or you can't do this. Yeah. Where really what we need to find out is why did you have that fall? Was mm-hmm. it just an accident? You just tripped over something? The dog? a rug, something like yeah. that? Or is it something more like it's you had a new medication that's not working for you, that's mm-hmm. causing more dizziness, um, you're having blood pressure issues, vision issues? You know, we really need to figure out why that yeah. is happening. Instead of hiding it because right. you're afraid of what's going to happen. Right. Or embarrassed. Yes. Probably they're embarrassed too. Yes. Did you say one out of three? One out of three. Wow. Yep. Yep, one out of three. And one mm-hmm. out of every five falls cause serious injuries such as head trauma, fractures, like hip fractures, spine, wrist. Uh, these injuries can make it hard to get around and live independently once you've had that kind of a fall. Hmm. That's scary. <laughs> yes. <laughs> it is scary. And, you know, and we see a lot of those when they, you know, the calls that I get where it is life changing. I have a gentleman right now who was fine living on his own in his 80s and uh, he went out to his garage to get something and fell and hit his head and had a brain bleed. So oh. we're looking at a completely like we're just going from living independently at home. We are skipping independent living, assisted living. We're actually going on to a residential care home for him because his care needs are so high. Yeah, boy, it can change in an instant like that. It really can. But there's so many different things that you can do to prevent some of that stuff. Mm -hmm. And and that's what that's what you and I are here today to do is to to try to talk to people and explain Mm -hmm. to people what what you can do yourself to try to prevent some of those things. Mm -hmm. Um, 
Another thing is when you have two or more health problems, you may have a 30% increased risk of falling. Hmm. So like, for example, if you have diabetes mm -hmm. and high blood pressure, right? That, that will give you an increased risk uh, for falling. Yeah. So you have to, you know, diabetes, what can happen? Your blood sugar can go too low. Yeah. Yep. You can mm -hmm. have neuropathy. Mm -hmm. You're going to have vision problems. True. Okay. So you know that you're going to have those things. Now you have to think of ways to prevent, you know, that fall or, you know, get the vision checked. Mm-hmm. You know, Stay on top if of you that. have neuropathy, there's different medications for neuropathy out there. Um, and you would definitely want to have handrails and different things that are going to help you. Absolutely. Absolutely. Um, why do we fall? Well, we're all getting older. We're not getting any younger. Our bones may be thin or brittle. Uh, muscles, you could get be getting some muscle loss. Hearing, vision, balance, strength. We're not walking as much. Uh, the way that we walk, overall health, the amount of medications we're on, your home environment challenges. You know, like if you have carpeting in one room that's really thick and plush, and then you're going to a room that has the new wood floors, mm -hmm. you know, you're changing uh, from one flooring type to another. It's like you're stepping on a pillow. That's true. You know, and a lot of people get unbalanced when they do that. Or a friend of mine was just telling me yesterday, she's very concerned about her dad, who is elderly. They have a the sunken den. Remember from like the oh, 70s? Yes. That was all the rage. Steps. So you have to step down and she worries about him because that's his favorite room. You know, she, she's like, should I put a ramp in? What should I do? Because he really struggles to lift his feet to, you know, step out of it. Yeah, a ramp or rails, yeah. you know, a handrail mm -hmm. to go that's up a good and down. Idea. You know, back then we didn't put the handrails on there. It was like, you know, new sitting area too. So you want the handrails on there. <laughs> but yeah, handrail, if that's something that he enjoys doing and he wants to continue doing that, mm -hmm. then modify that environment. Mm -hmm. Get get the handrails so he can continue to do that. Yeah, that's a good idea because they didn't think handrails and we thought ramp, but a handrail would probably be Yeah, even, even a better. handrail to be able to go up and down. Mm -hmm. I mean, to go back up those steps, you know, it would be good to have some kind of a handrail to, to use yeah, and to stability. utilize. Stability. Okay. We talked a little bit about also that shuffle step. You know, um, that shuffle step happens a lot to people who have already had a fall. So now they're so afraid of falling again, they shuffle, shuffle, shuffle. And what happens? I mean, we even, we, when I'm walking on this floor sometimes on, our, on the wooden floor here, I'll be walking along and all of a sudden I'll just trip over nothing. I've done that too. Yeah. <laughs> I'm glad it's not just me. <laughs> yes. So, you know, then I have to stop and think, wow, how did I do that? Because you just didn't pick up your foot for right. whatever reason. Right. Yeah. I'm just sliding it along. Mm -hmm. But uh, yeah, those shuffle steps, that that's exactly, they start to shuffle and they start going so fast in their shuffle that it causes that fall. So they need to glide. Right. They need to glide. <laughs> they need to glide. And, and that's something that you need to be aware of yourself. If you start doing that, now I'm aware that I'm doing it. I got to remind myself, glide, glide. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Well, and I think it's interesting what you said earlier, and I never really thought about this. They start shuffling also because they've had a fall. So it's out of fear of falling again. Out of fear of falling. Yes, absolutely. And that happens over and over and over again. We'll see that. Um, that that fear of falling again. I mean, we're none of us want to fall again. Yeah. For one People are embarrassed. Oh my God, I'm going to fall course. in front of all my friends or, mm -hmm. or this is going to happen. Um, if you are having that great fear of falling, then grab a cane, mm -hmm. you know, utilize a cane. That cane just gives you a little bit of that stability. I had a lady who did not like the canes, would not use a cane. And she was having a hard time putting her hand on top of the cane. She felt like that cane was wiggling around too much. Mm -hmm. The physical therapist ended up getting her, it almost looked like a shepherd's staff. Oh, yeah. And she used, it's not like this big, huge, humongous, you know, like uh -huh. like a tree kind of a shepherd's staff. <laughs> it was a, a thin, um, more like a cane yeah. that was a little bit taller, but she felt a lot more secure holding mm -hmm. on to that. Now, you'll see all the, the hikers and things with the, the walking sticks. Mm -hmm. uh, I always thought, wow. Why do they need those? Are they really that unsteady or where are they going that you're needing those walking sticks? Well, we just went to Mount Rainier a couple weeks ago and I bought the walking sticks. 
because I just wanted to see how they worked. Yeah. So how did it work? They were great. So does it just we make you more them. stable? Or? Definitely a lot more stable. They're because of the ground being so uneven. Yeah, those walking sticks just kind of like helped you feel more secure in how you were walking. That's interesting. Um, there's a couple seniors that I have in one of my communities here that do a lot of walking. We have a, a little wildlife kind of area back behind the building, and they have walking sticks that they use. When I asked him about his walking stick one day, he said, well, half of it's for my balance. The half of it, the other half of it is in case some wild animal comes running up to me. Then I have protection. <laughs> so. That's a good, you know, good point. <laughs> <laughs> Multi-uses too. Yeah. That's pretty cool. Different effects on aging and balance. We have like stability, feeling stable. I, I can't tell you how many people I'll be standing next to and then I'll see them swaying. Uh-huh. You know, like moving back and forth and, you know, the music's not on. They shouldn't be swaying like that. Uh-huh. You know, we talk to them about how they're standing. A lot of people like to stand with their feet close together. You spread the, the stance out a little bit more or one foot in front of the other. You don't have you don't that. sway then. Right. Okay. You're not having that, that stability issue. Postural changes. As we get older, everybody tends to go forward. Mm. I find myself in the evening when I go home at night. And I'm pushing my shopping cart around Kroger. And where am I? I'm going forward. <laughs> I'm That's tired towards the end of the day. Yeah. You know, where do we start to do? You see people with their arms on their shopping cart. And I think to myself, oh my gosh, what's that guy behind me thinking? So now I'm standing back up again. <laughs> but uh, you do. You see a lot of people mm-hmm. uh, going forward. Even when they get assistive devices, their walkers, their canes. They want to hunch over uh, forward. That is true. I see a lot of them doing that. And I wondered, is it just because I've seen some other walkers where they're upright and it just forces you to stand up tall. Have you seen those walkers, those Mm -hmm. really tall ones? That are, it's almost like the walkers backwards, the walkers behind you. Yeah, exactly. Yes. So does the walker sometimes like kind of like automatically put them in that position where they're leaning over? Because... Most of them do look kind of hunched over with the walker. I think sometimes their walker is not fitted to them. Okay. And a physical therapist or somebody who knows a lot about the assistive devices would be able to help you. Things are so easily available now, like on Amazon and things like that. And I've had a couple people who have bought their uh, walkers off of Amazon. They get them, they put them all together. I see them zipping down the hall, which is all great, Mm -hmm. but nobody's really showed them how to use them and nobody has fitted it to them. Okay. So now I see people with their their hands way up almost to their chest, but where are their shoulders at? Their Hunched shoulders up. are way up at their chest too. Mm-hmm. So now when they're walking and by the end of the day, they're so stressed out, their muscles and neck hurt because they're walking incorrectly with the walker. Yeah. So they have like their shoulders are kind of going up by their ears. Right. So that's putting them in that stressful kind of with their aches, you know, giving them aches in their neck and shoulder. So so if someone needs a walker, because there's so many different walkers out there and, you know, being in senior living, you know, you see everything up to like the Cadillac of walkers. Mm-hmm. So would you say instead of, I mean, I guess you could order on Amazon, but see someone, either a physical therapist or, you know, who could they go to? Like if they're at home and they got a walker, for example. Yes, absolutely. I, I would definitely uh, get a physical therapy evaluation. Um, if you're living in your own home, you're still able to drive. You just want the, the walker for stability and, and things along that way. I would ask your doctor to give you a referral to a physical therapist mm-hmm. uh, there in your area. If you're at home and you're not able to drive, then you could have home health care come in um, and and help you to use that mm-hmm. walker and yeah. explain to you how to use that walker properly. I see people driving their walkers. <laughs> you don't drive the walker. You walk with the walker. Um, and that's why the walkers are way out in front of them and they're way back behind there. So that's not doing any no. good. Yeah. No. And that will that will cause a fall also. You're mm-hmm. going to face plan at some point because that walker is going to get away from you. Mm-hmm. And they need to know to lock their walkers because I've seen some people almost fall because they have some with the seated and they go to sit on it and it starts rolling out behind exactly. them. Exactly. Exactly. And those are all things that physical therapists would go over with uh, that patient or that resident uh, and explain mm-hmm. to them how to utilize the to the best of their advantage so they don't have a fall with their walker i'm so glad you said that because i never really thought about it i tell people all the time oh make sure your mom has a walker but i didn't really think it through that you know 
you have to be fitted for it properly and taught how to use it properly, or you could set yourself up for other issues. So Mm -hmm. that's good to know. Thank you for mentioning that. Yeah, I had a physical therapist a while back who actually took a string and tied it on one handle of the walker and then around behind them and handled it, tied it to the other handle. Mm -hmm. So they said, this this is the area that your body should be in when you're walking. So that way they could understand that I should be up here close to this seat, Mm -hmm. not way back behind that seat. Mm -hmm. So that's why I call it driving the walker. You're not driving it. You're walking with it. Exactly. Very good to know. (laughs) But you know, another thing that people can do to prevent falls is to stay active. People get so sedentary at home, you know, they're with COVID going on and things, Mm -hmm. people are just not getting out. They're not doing anything. Um, But there's several things that you can do within the home. You know, you can grab a can of peas and use that as your weight, Mm -hmm. you know, and do some arm exercises. Um, You could be sitting in your chair in in the evenings when you're watching TV, when the commercials come on, you can kick those legs out there. Mm -hmm. I'll tell my exercise class people, hey, when you're sitting there, and especially if you're sitting there for a long period of time, don't just jump up and go. You can have a fall, you know, tap those feet a couple times before you Mm -hmm. get up out of that chair. Um, when those commercials come on, do those uh, leg lifts. Mm-hmm. Um, there's many a different things that you can do. I heard you say one time, and I actually do this, like we're on a Netflix binge <laughs> and been sitting there way too long to um, kind of take at your your foot, like at the ankle and circle before yes. you get up. And I'm like, that's really smart. So yes, I, I that do that now. Very, very flexible. We do that in all of our exercise yeah. classes and things too. Even with limited mobility, there's still a variety of things that you can do, such as reading, which improves the memory, uh, reduces stress, improves sleep, explore different hobbies. I heard you say Abby had taken up that little crystal art. Oh, the um, diamond painting. Diamond painting, yes. You know what's interesting is my husband works in senior living too, and he had a lady who's moving to his community, and she mentioned her hobbies, that she likes diamond painting, which... You know, my daughter, our daughter is all about diamond painting. And he took her with him to pick out a gift for the lady and got her a diamond painting and presented her with it. And she was just thrilled. But she is very into that, which is she actually told him she uses a light board. So it's to kind of explain it. It's like these little tiny dots that you stick in sort of like color by number. But because her vision's not as good because she's older you can buy a light board that's not expensive and put it underneath so that you can see it better, which I thought that was genious. Almost uh, made me think of light bright. Yeah, <laughs> exactly. Abby ordered one for herself too, because oh. you know, 17 year old <laughs> needs a light awesome. board. But yeah, <laughs> but I mean, you can, I, I love that because I thought that was a good example of how, you know, she wanted to do this, have this hobby, but it was hard for her. But you know, how brilliant, a light board, now she can do it. Mm-hmm. Yeah, staying active isn't all about um, doing cardio, doing fitness, doing mm-hmm. tai chi and other things like that although those are all great things to do it is a lot about you know reading exploring different uh, hobbies Mm -hmm. um, exercise regular all those things together Mm -hmm. is what helps to prevent falls how can my reading or improving my memory help to prevent a fall well if you're keeping your mind active you're going to be a little bit more focused on things that are around you and and think about things as you're doing them We all do those absent-minded things, but if we can keep that mind sharp and and really think about, you know, oh, I got to move that rug or I got to turn that light on before I walk in there. I need to place some little night lights around my my house. I could see how that helps. And like we were saying, the diamond art, that's your hand-eye coordination. Mm -hmm. That has to help as well. Yeah. Oh, absolutely. Absolutely. It does. Exercise regularly. You can do it while seated. You don't have to stand up and do the Jane Fonda workouts. You can do Richard Simmons, which you could. I really like him. Sweat to the oldies. <laughs> Sweat to the oldies. But you could do a lot of those exercises, too, while seated in your chair. You can modify. You don't have to be. Yes, modify yeah. them. You don't have to be standing up for everything. Tai mm-hmm. Chi is great for seniors. Mm-hmm. Um, and there's so many great Tai Chi videos and things out there now. But you can just slip that in there. I mean, we got 24 hours in a day. What are you doing all day long? You can't just do a 15 minute little Tai Chi workout or, you know, move those legs around or mm-hmm. walk back and forth. My, my mom is stage four renal failure. She's on oxygen. Mm-hmm. And you would think that she would just sit at home all day long and not do anything because she can't breathe and she's stage four renal failure. Yeah. But she doesn't. She belongs to Red Hats. She oh. belongs to every group there is at our church. 
She did PTA forever and still does some consulting uh, when my sister was on the PTA. She She's, still gets out. I yeah. mean, she belongs to a sorority sisters group. So she still mm -hmm. gets out and goes and does all these different things. She's still um, active. Yes. Yeah. She's still trying to maintain her being active. And every time I talk to her, I say, oh, did you walk back and forth across the living room? Did you do this? And I'm sure some days when she sees my name come up on the phone, she's like, oh, she's going to ask me all these questions. <laughs> <laughs> but, you know, it, it is. It's, it helps to have someone mm -hmm. to encourage you to do these things. But really, again, it all comes back to us. Yeah. We are really responsible for our own health and what we do. Well, and I think like you were saying, just when people think, oh, I need to start an exercise routine. I mean, you automatically go to, I need to spend 30 minutes or an hour. I need to do this and I need to break a sweat, all this. No, just start wherever you are. Just start with something. Like you said, walk across your living room five times, mm -hmm. you know, just back and forth. Do something like that. It just start off doing something. Right. Exactly. We, we just handed out uh, baskets at the senior center mm -hmm. not too long ago. And in our baskets, we had the TheraBands. Yeah. Uh, TheraBands are a great thing. And if you don't know what a TheraBand is, it looks like a big, huge rubber band. Mm -hmm. um, and it's basically resistance. You're just doing resistance training with it. Um, we actually put a little um, set of exercises mm -hmm. together with it. Uh, and maybe you can put that on the that's a good on idea. the podcast also that that yeah. would be a great thing for seniors to have and mm -hmm. and to be able to do and not just seniors for everybody for everyone I know I was just thinking that when you said that I should be doing that <laughs> <laughs> should have kept one of those we bands try those out. <laughs> but the therabands and, and the weight resistance is mm -hmm. a great thing and and you don't have to stand up to do it you can be seated to do it you can be laying in a bed to do that uh, resistance training so mm -hmm. it doesn't matter at what stage you are. Uh, I don't care if you're 50 or you're 105, you can still get more muscle mass. Mm -hmm. That's great. And that's what's going to keep you from falling and live Absolutely. your best life. We also talked a little bit um, before we started the podcast about the effect on COVID. And so Jackie works in a lot of the independent living communities and she does the exercise classes to keep everyone active. What are you seeing with COVID? Because I mean, we're kind of, as we were talking about it, we're seeing more seniors not wanting to make the move to independent living because they're afraid about COVID. And in doing that, many of them are becoming more isolated, more sedentary. So let's kind of talk a little bit about that, why it is safe to go ahead and come to independent living and how that, you know, is a, is a benefit. Yes, and, and that is true. You still can do what, what you want to do and how you want to do it. You have an apartment uh, that you live in, but you live in a community with with several other seniors. The thing I love about it is you're not having to do all the maintenance on your house. Oh, yeah. Uh, I have an aunt and uncle that live in a different state, and I'm having to try to schedule all these different people to go do different maintenance things at their place, uh -huh. which is stressful to them and stressful to me. Yeah. We've talked several times about independent living, and that's... The direction that we're going in and i can't tell you how many people that live here now in the independent living that tell me i'm so glad that i'm here i don't have to worry about you know the the water heater going out i don't have to worry about the air conditioning not working or going out to the grocery store during covid i mean right. do you want to be 80 and having to go to the grocery store i don't even want to go right. to the grocery exactly <laughs> exactly and there's so many independent living communities that do have uh, meal service yeah so that is the great thing uh, about these independent living communities and some people are worried about moving right now with COVID going on. Uh, they're taking all the, the precautions for people to move in. Uh, I had one community that has people moving in. There's a window of time that all the other residents are in their rooms mm -hmm. that they let the movers come in. Um, in one of the communities that I'm in quite a bit, they go around after every single meal. They spray the door handles down, the doors down. Uh, the meals are delivered to chairs outside of their rooms. Mm -hmm. Um, they're taking all the precautions that they can, mm -hmm. but the people that live in the community are still being able to be active. And do their exercise classes, yes. do other activities. Well, and I, I feel like I, we're actually meeting right now in one of the independent communities, and I feel like it's probably never been safer or cleaner. Right. And to even come in here, I had to stop and answer a bunch of questions, have my temperature taken. You know, so they're being very safe. Right, right. Where I find people that are living in their own homes, you know, their families are afraid to go over there and see them. Mm -hmm. So they're not really seeing what's going on. 
that uh, person is becoming more and more isolated. With the isolation, you get depression. Which leads you not to exercise or get up. You don't want to do anything then. You're just very limited. You can't go anywhere. Your friends aren't coming over. You're just very limited in things that you can do. And Mm -hmm. and that's why I stress the the independent living communities are great for people like that. Yeah, I completely agree. And I, you know, I, I see that a lot in what I do that people are saying, well, I'm just going to wait till COVID's done. Well, I don't know when that's going to be. And, you know, why there is, you can be fine in independent living and actually in a better place in many cases, because you're right. going to have other people and you're not going to be isolated, like Jackie was saying. Right. We have physicians that come into the building and, and of course, they take all those same precautions. Um, the residents are, are all really good about wearing their masks. They have to wear their mask mm-hmm. in the in the common areas. Uh, when they go out, I will tell you that sometimes it gets where things have to be tightened down a little bit and the mm-hmm. residents were in their rooms, but still they would sometimes open their doors and talk to their neighbor across the, the mm-hmm. uh, hallway from them. So they're not in complete isolation like you would be at exactly. home. Exactly. I know uh, some communities were actually doing bingo. I'm not sure how they were doing it, but with you hallway, have bingo. Your hallway bingo, hallway bingo. <laughs> which I thought was great. <laughs> Very creative. Yes. Yes. (laughs) So I think these are all just great, um, great tips, Jackie. And I know that you said that you have a list that she's going to, Jackie's going to share that with us so that we'll put that on the, on my website, we'll put it on the podcast. And it's a tip for preventing falls, like a checklist to go through your house or apartment and make sure that you're staying safe. Um, Before we end, I always like to ask everyone, is there a senior that's just, that sticks out in your mind that is an inspirational senior? You know, I have would have so many of them, Lori, because I've been doing this for so long. And just in one community alone, I have a hundred seniors that I interact with almost daily. So you have a lot of them. I have a lot of them. I have a lot of them. But I do have a little power couple. And, and I'm sure most everybody uh, who might listen to this podcast may even know them. Mm-hmm. But I've worked with uh, these two. And I don't know if I can say their names. Um, but I've worked with these two. You can, because I've said his name before, okay. and he's going to be on the podcast soon. Oh, yay. yay. <laughs> well, that, that would be Doug and Claire Brown. Mm-hmm. I've worked with them a lot over the years. The veterans event that you do with us also is a, a big event that we hold every year, and we donate the funds to a different veterans uh, organization that's local. Mm-hmm. Doug happens to be the liaison for Flower Mound for the veterans. Mm-hmm. He's um, a World War II vet. Yes, he is. And he is like, if there's a volunteer organization, I think he belongs to it. Yeah, he's because amazing. he like belongs to everything. But that's what I encourage other people to do too, is to get involved either at your church. Someday when our daycares open back up, go do the reading daycare, the grandparent reading program with that daycare. Get active with the Flower Mound Senior Center, Louisville Senior Center, you know, a, a senior center that's close to you. Even if it's something you think, oh, I'm not really that social. I don't know if I want to do that. There's so many different things that you can do within mm-hmm. the senior center. Help with the voting. That's what yes. Doug and Claire have been so busy doing now. You know, they're out there, you know, the last early, red, whatever it was, early um, voting. voting. Yep. They were there every day. <laughs> they belong to RSVP. They belong to so many different mm-hmm. groups out there. And I really encourage people to to do that because otherwise what happens? We age so much faster. Our health declines so much faster. Then you run the risk of the falls and you run risk of depression. I mean, you just... It's the whole use it or lose it, you know, with with your body, with exercising, with your brain, everything. So, yeah, if you just sit home in front of a TV. Yeah, we're not made just to retire and to sit there Mm -hmm. on a a, in a rocking chair on the front porch. Mm -mm. That that's not what we're made to do. There's so many things and and so many gifts that our seniors can give back to our community Mm -hmm. Uh, and so many things people can learn from our seniors. Oh, absolutely. That it's important for them to stay active and stay healthy. Yeah, I completely agree. Well, Jackie, thank you so much. This has been great. This has been such great information I've learned from you. And I know that 
you know, our audience is going to learn a lot. And like I said, I'm going to have the list from Jackie, the checklist. We'll have mm-hmm. that available to you. Um, and then the exercise with the uh, there TheraBands as well. Um, I'm going to start doing those exercises yeah. too. <laughs> <laughs> so thank you so much for being on, Jackie. And thank you all for listening. If you enjoy the podcast, please go and give us a like and um, follow us on Apple or wherever you're listening to your podcast. But be sure to listen and share us with your friends. Thanks so much. Bye-bye. Thank you.